guys, ketemu lagi sama gue Indri di acara Kisum Dan hari ini gue bakal ngobrol bareng sama Cezairis Cezairis Nah, jadi nih sebelum kita tanya-tanya, jadi nanti kita bakal ngebahas uh, lagu terbaru kamu ya Iya Nah, sebelumnya kita mau tanya-tanya perkenalan dulu Oke okay. okay, Jadi, Cezairis ini siapa? Dari mana? Gitu. Saya seorang singer-songwriter from Singapore And um, I actually started out in the music industry really long time ago. Well, not really long, um, but I was in a sebuah peraduan that's called uh, Singapore Idol, yeah. and I I was lucky enough to win first place. Um, but since then, I've been writing music in Bahasa and in English, and uh, recently I've just been focusing on writing on English music. Yeah. Jadi ini mungkin masih banyak juga yang bertanya-tanya kayak. Uh, Zaza nih bisa fasi bahasa Indonesia juga apa emang ada keturunan orang Indonesia uh, atau uh, lama tinggal di Singapura atau gimana tau? Oke okay, saya tinggal di Singapura yeah. tapi um, like my family heritage uh, my mother's Singaporean but her family is from Pekalongan uh, my father's Singaporean uh, but his father is from Banjarmasin and his mother is Chinese Malaysian yeah. Um, yeah I'm kind of a mix of like different sort of cultures. Jadi Seza ini juga uh, salah satu jebolan dari ajang pencarian bakat di Singapura itu Singapura Idol di tahun 2009 ya. 2009. Dan berhasil menyabet juara satu ya kan? Yeah. Dan Seza ini tapi sebelum uh, kamu uh, mas ikut ajang pencarian bakat tersebut, kamu sebelumnya kegiatan itu ya Pak emang udah sering bernyanyi atau apa? Um, so before before I join Idol I was actually a, a music student in art school. Mm. Yeah. So the reason why I joined the competition is because I got kicked out of school. <laughs> I wasn't really going to school because I was my attendance was really bad because I was uh, at that time I was already like a working musician at night. So I would play music at night until like two or dua tiga pagi and like the next morning I wouldn't go to school. So <laughs> I got kicked out of school. But the funny thing is when I got the letter. I got kicked out from school. I was walking up to my apartment, and I opened the door, and the TV was playing, and it was, it was a commercial for the Singapore Idol show. So I was looking at that, like I got kicked out of school, and I saw the competition on the TV, and I was like, yeah, I could do that. Jadi Seza ini kan baru merilis single terbarunya di tanggal 19 Oktober kemarin ya, yeah. yang berjudul Mirage. Hmm. Nah, Mirage ini sebenarnya uh, menceritakan tentang apa ya? Um, so the story about the song is last year I was in Sweden and I was writing my new EP um, and we only had like an hour left in the studio and me and my producer we were like just joking and we said like hey why don't we just write a song in one hour <laughs> and we were like why don't we try to write a song in one hour and try to make it as simple as we can so we, we were just laughing on the way and we were like hey let's write a two chord song and let's try to make it as simple as we can but after we were done we were like hey Laguni actually is actually not bad yeah. and we realized that it could be something and the lesson that I learned from writing that song is that I didn't have time to doubt myself because I think as a creative and as an artist more often than not you always take a long time to do something because you always think that you can't do it like you do something and then you're like oh this is very good or you do something else and then this isn't very good but for that song I guess I didn't really have time to second guess or talk myself and I think that's like kind of the most honest way that I can say what I wanted to say at the time but the song in the context of the song um, is about it's kind of about a male obsessive behavior and I think that is something that's very common among men. I think as a woman, you probably know that. Like I used to be the kind of guy that would text girls non-stop and go like, Oh, kamu di mana? Oh, mau jumpa jam berapa? And every five minutes, I'll text her and like, oh, What are you doing? I'll DM her and this and that and this and that, right? And like, I didn't realize it at the time, but that isn't a very good like attitude to have as a as a person because when you are too obsessed with something, you, you you lose perspective and you don't see whatever it is that's around you that you want, that you should see. And like when your friends tell you that, hey, you're being kind of weird, you're like, no, I'm not. And you know what I mean? And you lose all that perspective. So the song kind of tells the story about a guy who 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 is just so absolutely insane, crazy about this girl that he drove her away. 
and that's kind of like the psychosis that I wanted to bring forward in the song is that obsessive behavior isn't always very good. It can be good if you focus it the right way, but it's not always the best thing to do. Dan dalam proses kreatifnya lagu ini dibuat, uh, siapa aja yang terlibat gitu? Kan kayak tadi kan kamu yang menulis dan membuat lagu ini. Yeah, so me, my producer Harry Samadol, who's produced for like a couple Korean artists, Boa, like he's, he's produced for Westlife, he's produced for a lot of uh, some Indonesian artists as well. And uh, I worked with him for for my previous uh, single, um, but he is the producer of the song and the producer of my upcoming EP. And also my friend who's an Australian singer-songwriter, uh, Brooke Toya, we were all in a room in writing, writing together. Um, but what I wanted my this EP to sound like I think sonically, I wanted it to sound like the sounds from my youth. Like I grew up listening to a lot of like 90s R&B and like early 2000s pop, like boy band and that kind of stuff. And I, I think this song has a really cool like, we wanted it to have a really cool 90s electro synth kind of vibe. And that's kind of like the direction that I'm going to with my music. Like. I used to play guitar and I used to write with guitar and then I used to write with just piano but I think being in different situations and allowing yourself to hear different instruments and hear different sonic textures kind of changes the way you approach music as a whole and I think it's, it's quite a learning journey for me as well to be able to learn new things like program new things on the synthesizer and take new instruments that you've never heard before and kind of try to give a vintage sort of flavor to it. I think that's what I'm trying to do. Siapa yang menginspirasi kamu dalam pembuatan lagu ini gitu? Pasti kan ada kayak sosok, ya mungkin sosok spesial lah gitu Atau uh, ada juga infonya katanya uh, salah satu musisi dari Indonesia itu Tulus juga salah satu oh, yeah, yeah, yang yeah. menginspirasi karya kamu juga Ya, yeah, um, so I was signed to a record label in like the early 2010s um, But when I, when I was done with my contract uh, I was an indie artist for a while and uh, my manager at that time, he was like, hey, you gotta listen to this guy called Tulus and I've never heard of him at that time. So I listened to album Gajah and I was like, wow, this is yeah. completely incredible because dia menggunakan bahasa dengan secara like so sincere, you know, and like as a Singaporean who doesn't really, uh, I'm not really exposed to music in bahasa, there's something completely fresh to me that you're able to, to say to say something and tell stories that are so not common, you know? Stories that are not common and turn them into such beautiful music. So I told my I told my manager that I really want to meet this guy. And uh, we flew to Bandung and we met uh, Tulus. And until now, we sort of like, we developed a connection and we became friends. And I also became friends with the producer that's been producing Tulus's album, Adrian Ronaldi. And he also helped to co-produce my EP that I released in 2016. So that was my first independent project. Um, and EP itu kayak kolaborasi antara musisi dari Singapore dan musisi dari Bandung. So it was really special because I flew up all my friends who play music in my band and my musicians from Singapore. And we had like the string players and the horn players from Toulouse's band and we sort of recorded an album together and I thought that was kind of the start of my musical journey. It sort of creatively started in Bandung. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kenapa sih kamu tuh kayak tertarik untuk uh, mempromosikan lagu kamu mm -hmm. di pasar musik Indonesia gitu? Kayak tadi kamu juga uh, tertarik kayak dengan musik-musik indie mm -hmm. di Indonesia juga. Kenapa harus Indonesia gitu? I think culturally, like Indonesian people are really open-minded to a lot of different kinds of music because you guys have a, have such a diverse and rich music culture that as people you can appreciate deeper level of musical things, I think. And the reason why I'm, I'm here is also because I didn't really expect, I didn't really think of it like, oh, I want to do music in Indonesia. I didn't really think of it that way, but I just wrote music. But Looking at the data and looking at the response, um, pendengar dari Jakarta dan Bandung 10 kali ganda lebih dari pendengar dari Singapore. So it's kind of funny that um, I started my career sort of in Bandung yeah. without even really thinking about wanting to 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 promote it there. Um, I just wanted to work with great musicians, you know. I didn't really think much about it, but in the end, it sort of came full circle in the sense that 
a lot of listeners that are listening come from Jakarta and come from Bandung and yeah. other major cities in, in Indonesia that I've never even heard of, like places like Bogor, Medan, yeah, yeah. and Surabaya, you know, and like there's like I think what's really great is that we the audience in, in Indonesia have such a a really great musical vocabulary that language and nationality and race and color, all these barriers they start to fall and we just appreciate music as as great music and I think that's what the beauty of Indonesia is is that people here are kind, appreciative and very intelligent towards emotional interaction so I quite like that Oke kalau misalkan mau dengerin uh, lagu kamu nih bisa langsung bisa didengerin di mana aja? Ya, yeah, so like all my music is on Apple Music, Spotify, Juke, every every digital platform. Um, I don't do physical anymore because it's 2018. Yeah. Uh, but I really miss it though. Um, but you can also check me out on Instagram and anything that's that's gonna come, I always post it on my Instagram and Twitter at Sazari, S A Z A E R E. Um, and uh, I, on YouTube it's Sazari Vivo. And uh, also I have another channel which is called Society. You can just like add me. I'll always try to respond to everyone in my DMs. I make it like put it in my schedule to like <laughs> to like try to respond to everyone and try to just return the love and appreciation. So yeah, you can just drop me a text. Okay guys, kayaknya kita udah cukup bincang-bincang sama. Thank you so much. Terima kasih udah mau main-mainin ke. Hai, jadi jangan kapok-kapok ya. Guys, kiranya uh, udah puas kan ya ngobrol-ngobrol sama Seza dan yang udah penasaran juga Seza nih siapa sih orang Indonesia atau orang Singapura tadi udah terjawab juga terus juga lagu-lagunya terus juga pengetahuan musiknya dan lain sebagai statement-statementnya dia keren-keren banget ya kan Oke sampai jumpa di kisum selanjutnya pantai terus channelnya di Hai Online